What's up, Otaku fam? We are the Otaku Couple, back with more reactions here for the channel with more Salmonella Academy Top 10 Worst Animal Skeletons. This should be fun. I have questions. And he's got the answers because that's what Sam does. <laughs> that's why we're going to the Academy. Thank you guys for the continued support on these 7 Eleven videos. I'm glad you guys are liking it so much because we've been really enjoying doing <laughs> so these videos. So entertaining. They're, the dry oh, humor shit. is on point. So. As always, be sure to comment, like, subscribe. Every little bit helps. Let's hop on in. Let's go. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Hey kids, as we all know, the evolution of species is an incredible mm. process driven by little more than the random chance that certain mutations may happen to provide a practical advantage in a creature's environment. And as a result, there's a lot of things out there that look super dumb once you strip back a few layers. <laughs> Here's the top 10 worst animal the skeletons lips, of though. all time. So first and foremost, I'd like to settle a little debate I've been seeing floating around the past few weeks. Yes, penguins do, in fact, have knees. But in order to hide full-grown legs into one plump cylinder, you gotta have a little skeletal trickery <laughs> on your side. You guys ever do wall sits in gym class or elsewhere? One of the most torturous exercises out there. Uh -huh. I now feel even worse for penguins, because not only did they have to deal with living in a frigid black and white hellscape, the most hostile environment known to man second only to the vacuum of space, all the while constantly pursued by ravenous bloodthirsty sea dogs, but they're also secretly doing wall sits their entire life. Quick side <laughs> note, in Mandarin, the word for penguin consists of the characters for business goose, which is fucking hilarious, like one day a goose put on a suit and said, today it is time to make a name for myself, honk. This next guy is known as Parsons Chameleon, found in the more remote mm -hmm. regions of Madagascar. Notice the fleshy protuberances around its nose area. <laughs> Turns out, not fleshy, not even remotely fleshy, not even one flesh. Instead, it just has a skull Ooh. forever frozen in time in the middle of exploding, like it sneezed right in the middle of God, shaping it out of clay, and it was just like, ah, whatever, it's a feature now. So for that, this rough-headed reptilian gets number nine. That's Normally wild. I would've ranked it higher, but that's a dope tale, so he gets some pity points. Next is the puffer fish. So for most of my life, oh, I've I pictured puffer fish as just puffers. not having any bones. Okay, weird the looking. puffer fish is fucking wild. It literally like blows yeah. up, like it expands and retracts. It's fucking weird. I know yeah. it doesn't really make sense, but neither does them turning into a balloon like a goddamn cartoon. Turns out, in their normal state, they actually look like this. Yeah. And when they inflate, those concentric yeah. rings of spines so slide outwards looking. past one another to cover the full area, like the aperture of a camera lens expanding to cover the full frame of the fish. The sheer ingenuity of this design has shattered my childhood dream of real-life balloon animals, which has earned the puffer fish the number eight spot on this list. Now, if you've gotten around a certain zoological circles, you've been shown this skull and been told, ah yes, that comes from the dwarf elephant. Oh, you've never seen one? That's because, uh, they're extinct. And that thing in the middle? Ah yes, nothing more than the nose hole to which the trunk the connects. Nose However, hole. if you're a rational, free-thinking adult like me, you can look past the lies spoon-fed to you by Nat Geo and other liberal media outlets and see this for what it is. A cyclops. <laughs> Next is the orca, otherwise known as the killer whale, the panda torpedo, or the sea world slave. It's skeletal. I will forever call the panda torpedoes now. <laughs> that is glorious. It is fairly normal at first glance, but check out this little thing under here. That little right. bony Floating blip is good. actually all that remains of the legs and pelvis of the orca from when it evolved from land mammals. Personally, I think that's highly disrespectful to their ancestors. Like, they could have taken the seal route and used those legs for good in the water, but instead, these sea cowards said, no thanks, we're gonna undo all that evolution and just be bigger smarter warmer fish again but hey we'll keep this little piece of nothing just to remember you guys by truthfully i could have chosen almost any cetacean to pick on for this but the orca's face also reminds me of scp682 which is the most op overrated shit out there so he gets the number six spot moving on Fair now bear enough. with me here in every other mammal on earth the canine teeth point downward from the gum to the mouth you know like a tooth. But this guy, known as the Babarusa, said, huh, huh, and decided to have them grow up through the entirety of its fucking snoot and out the other end, which is the most nonsensical thing I've ever seen. Like, hmm, toenails out the front? How cliche. Let's make them go through the whole foot instead. Look, now I can kick good behind me. That's not all, though. These tusks also oh, keep growing God. for the creature's entire life, which isn't a problem in and of itself, right? Rodents, they keep chewing stuff to wear them down. Alligators, they just let them fall out now and then. But the Babarusa's like, pfft. I'll just nut in a lady pig long before this becomes an issue. So if it lives long enough, the teeth can curve right on around and slowly bore into the thing's face, like built-in Chinese bamboo torture. And occasionally, they can end up actually piercing the skull and shish kebabbing the brain. Now some people might say that this doesn't belong on this list, given that teeth aren't technically bones. And to those people, kids, we say, 
eat shit and die. Next we have the octopus. The octopus skeleton is so bad that it doesn't even exist. Sure they got this little thing in the middle but that doesn't count that's just chitin. And yeah they can get in a jar or whatever but at what cost? At the animal picnics, the crowd shouts, <laughs> bleh, shun the spineless freak. And at the animal wheelbarrow races, with nothing to grab hold of, the cephalopod holds a solitary vigil at the starting line, and lo, the octopus wins not the participant medal at the Grand Prix, and the number four spot on this list. Moving on, here's the skeleton of a fruit bat. Now, not a big deal to They're us regular cool. folk, but imagine if humans had no context of bats and they dug this thing up. Like, class, archaeologists have recently found these fossilized remains, and using modern technology, we can see exactly what it would have looked like back when it was alive. This abominable creature is known only to scientists as Finger Boy, and it's theorized to have finger fed upon boy. fruit, insects, and the dreams of orphans, which it would it's siphon- like, It's like salad fingers. This is disturbing. Why is it nipple? Oh, no. This is disturbing. Ugh. Sex and the dreams of orphans, which it would siphon out from the ears of the errant little waifs whilst they slumbered. By the way, if you Google image bat skeleton, like, more than half of them have the ears built in. Just like, hmm, I feel the extraordinarily <coughs> bat-like wings and figure of our decoration are much too subtle for our consumers. Better slap these on. At number two, we have the anteater. From its uh, oboe-like skull to its gorilla yeah, fist and hands, Ren one can only wonder who let this creature ears. exist. Fun fact, if you take the anteater's skull and blow into its nose, it plays a beautiful song recounting the animal's entire life, and then security escorts you out of the museum. Looking at this, I can only pose <laughs> the, the question security. asked for generations long before my own. That being, why the long face? Before we get to the number one spot, here's a few honorable mentions. Okay. The wolf eel. The okay, ostrich, eels just have bad bones in general. This human-cat hybrid I found on a tabloid site. And of course, the mermaid. So at our number one spot, we have... <laughs> This creature, oh, that's, uh, that's supposed to be a mirror. I know most of you can't see yourself in it on account of your filthy Dorito smeared <laughs> screen, so just take my word for it. So what's wrong with humans, you ask? Well, a lot of things, but for now, let's stick to the skeleton. First off, these bones right here, these are known as the metatarsals. All part of the foot, right? No, that's a bunch of primate propaganda. In most other groups of land mammals, what we'd consider our ankles is actually the quote-unquote knee of the animal. Thanks a lot, walking upright. Also, it's estimated that around 80% of people will experience chronic back pain at some point in their life. Thanks a lot, walking upright. Lastly, Thanks probably a lot something you've heard upright. about at some point, our skull to pelvis ratio. For most animals, giving birth, not a big deal. Small heads, wide hips, <laughs> mazel tov. But check out the big brain on Brett. <laughs> Throws a real monkey wrench in the works there. For a while, it led to some problems, till those extra brains figured out how to work <laughs> around it. So I guess you win this round, humans. But that doesn't stop you from also winning the number one spot on the worst <laughs> skeletons of all time. But hey, just because you'll forever be flawed on the inside doesn't mean you can't improve yourself on the outside. Right. That's why you need to try Skillshare. Right. Skillshare is an online- Gotta Brilliant. check out Skillshare. Brilliant. It all comes back full circle. Whoa, those were some interesting and very bad animal skeletons. We do have an interesting Poor cephalopod. skeletal system. We do. It's very complex, and I I feel bad for every yeah. nurse student <laughs> that has to learn. Like, if you look at your foot, like, if you ever, if anybody's ever had an injury with their ankle foot area and you get an x ray, it's like, yeah. how are our toes? Like connected. Yeah, it's weird. Cause like it's our toes like wonky have like little floating bits. It's weird. Thank you guys for the continued support. We will see you for the next video. Bye. Bye.